past year was the 50th anniversary of the Surgeon General's report on smoking and health. Uh, some of you remember it. I was in medical school. Uh, to be honest with you, I had never heard of the Surgeon General until that report came out. And all of a sudden, I mean, and everybody was talking about the Surgeon General. At that time, about 43% of the American people were smokers. And Luther Terry made it very clear that smoking was dangerous to your health. It could cause lung cancer. It could cause heart disease. And of course, over the years, 31 reports on smoking and health have been issued by the Surgeon General, including the three that I released, one on smoking and minorities, one on women and smoking, and one on strategies for reducing tobacco use. Um, so this is, this is an example of a relay race. Uh, Luther Terry didn't know that 90% of smokers became addicted before they were 18 years of age. He didn't know that. He didn't know that secondhand smoke was dangerous to your health. It would take Steinbach and later Coop to make those points. Now, Luther Terry was himself, uh, very interestingly, a smoker. And on the way to release the report, he was sitting in the back seat of the car with his assistant, and his, he was smoking more than usual. He was nervous. <laughs> so, uh, so his assistant said, well, Dr. Terry, do you know the first question they're going to ask you when you finish releasing this report? He said, no, what's that? So they're going to ask you if you smoke. He said, no, they wouldn't ask me that. That's a personal question. <laughs> he kept, kept on. So he went on and just did a great job of releasing the report. First question, Dr. Terry, do you smoke? He said, no, no, I don't. <laughs> well, the, the, the reporter had done his homework, so he said, well, Dr. Terry, when did you quit? And he said, I quit 30 minutes ago. <laughs> That's one story that's really important in terms of this relay race. This is another story, a sadder story that's important. Um, this happened in May 1997, but the story begins in 1932, when in a small town in Alabama, not too far from where I grew up, Tuskegee, Alabama, where the university is located, the Public Health Service decided to initiate a study in which 400 black men would be studied with syphilis, diagnosed and studied, but not treated but given the impression that they were being treated. They would be followed, and the course of the disease of syphilis would be followed. 400 men, uh, and even after penicillin and other ways of treatment, it continued without treatment. In 1959, it was transferred to the CDC, and in 1972, it was discontinued. Um, now, 1972, for, that's 40 years that this study continued. And you may ask yourself, how could a study like this go on uh, in the public health service? And, and the Surgeon General had some involvement. But back in those days, in the, especially in the 30s and 40s in this country, the, the concept of eugenics was very strong. Uh, Surgeon General Hugh Cummins uh, went to the University of Virginia that had one of the best, strongest programs in eugenics. It took a while to get past that um, in this country. And uh, I think in 1950, the University of Virginia discontinued their program in eugenics. But the whole idea was that some lives are less valuable than others, right? That was what eugenics said in essence. It even had to do with so-called pure gene pools. But it was, it's a part of the history. It's a painful part. But if you don't know the history, sometimes you are destined to repeat it. So when we reviewed this, when I was at CDC. We had a hundred people who worked together to review the Tuskegee study. Our goal was to really do something to say that this country had moved past this. And so when the commission reported, uh, it was a very powerful report. And I remember going to Washington and talking with Donald Shalala. And then we called President Clinton that very evening. And, uh, and when he heard uh, the results of the commission study, he immediately said, the president needs to apologize on behalf of the American people. And on May 16, 1997, and that's the East Room of the White House, um, we uh, had the presidential apology. Uh, there were, I believe, 10 of these men still alive then. Five were able to join us. The point I'm trying to make is that it's something that we had to get over in order to, to move toward health equity. Uh, three things came with President Clinton's apology because we didn't think it was enough just to apologize. And one, President Clinton uh, said that we would establish a bioethics center at Tuskegee 
And that bioethics center would have training programs for people uh, in medicine, people doing research with human subject. Also said that uh, uh, people working with humans, humans had to, every two years, demonstrate their knowledge in the area of, of, of human protection. And that's incorporated into our human protection programs in the country. And finally, uh, if research was being done in communities, the community had to be involved. Those were the three things that were in. I encourage you to go read that. Uh, but the idea was really to put in place policies that would actually protect people in the future much better than they have been in the past. Mm -hmm.